if I keep laughing throughout this video, just know that whenever I'm pissed, I tend to smile or laugh a lot. I don't know what's up with that, but... Well, hello there. Welcome back. It's been a while and uh, I've had a pretty stressful couple of weeks, not gonna lie. However, every now and then, when I lay in my bed at night, before I actually drift off to sleep, there's this one thought that haunts my mind, and it is... Why was the ending of Credence by Penelope Douglas so fucking bad? Yeah, I know, this is the least of my concerns, you know, out of everything that's going on in life right now. I just can't help it, you know, it always pops back into my head and... What should I do? You know, it gets me very angry, it gets me very frustrated. <laughs> I used to have a lot of anger management issues in the past, I still do have some, you know, I have some work to do to this day. But two things that I found generally help me out quite a bit, you know, to calm down and use my anger in a healthy way are to rant about the thing that's making me angry in the messiest way possible and to do my nails. Mind you, I'm not a manicure, okay? So this is not about the nails actually looking pretty by the end of the process. It's just about, you know, giving myself something to do with my hands and something to focus my attention on. And so I thought it would be a good idea for me to do a video, you know, with this rant plus me doing my nails. Am I going to be able to rant and talk while doing my nails? That's the thing we'll have to find out here because I just have to get my hair out of my face. Before we actually get into this, I would like to take a moment to remind you all that the world is in shambles right now. There's so much shit going on all over the world. You know, there's things going on in Yemen and Palestine. I mean, they've been going on for a long time, but you know, just bear with me for a second. Yemen, Palestine, Poland, Philippines, Hong Kong, China, and of course, the ongoing systemic oppression of black people that's been going on for hundreds of years. I'm gonna try to share fewer links this time but with more resources contained in each link. Uh, for all these situations, you know, for all these things that are going on and I would like to remind you that you cannot erase hundreds of years of systemic oppression by sharing petitions on Twitter for a couple of weeks. That's not how it works. You know, we have to always be working toward getting better and being more educated on issues and just fighting the fight really so yeah i just like to remind you that it's quite important for us to not lose momentum please check those links please sign the petitions please if you have the means to donate to all of these causes you know we are talking about actual human lives. Before we start, I would just like to put up a trigger warning. In this video, I'm going to be discussing sexual assault, sexual harassment, um, just abuse in general, and there's gonna be a brief mention of suicide, so if these are topics that might trigger you, please click off now. Uh, this is probably not the ideal video for you. Please click off now if you don't feel safe, and I will see you again whenever I see you again. Okay, so now let's get into what the video is about. I have three pages of notes, mind you, so this is gonna be a huge, long mess. I'm gonna start applying some base code and I'll tell you about the basic summary. I picked up Credence by Penelope Douglas earlier this month. I believe it was like mid-June, some somewhere around there. And this book is about this girl called Tiernan. I Sometimes I read uh, in romance books, some names that just make me go, you know? Anyway, Tiernan is the daughter of a famous director, film director, and a famous film actress. Her parents were always shit to her. She was always very neglected, you know, basically her mother's assistant was the one who took care of her from very early on. She finds out that her father had a terminal illness and the mother didn't want to live without him, so they both committed suicide together. And now her parents are dead and she gets a call from this guy who's kind of like her uncle, but not really. It's like, he, 
was her father's stepbrother, but she never had any contact with him and his family, like, in her life. She never saw his face, she never heard his voice, and yeah, there's no blood connections, but, you know, technically speaking, he is her step-uncle. And she gets a call from him, uh, telling her that in her parents' will, I guess it's how you call it, um, he was appointed as the person who was going to be her caretaker from now on. And he asked her if she was fine with that, because she's 17 and she's just, you know, a couple of, a few months uh, from turning 18. And yeah, she eventually decides that she is going to move in with him and his two sons. She's 17, the sons are 21 and 23, I think, somewhere around that. And okay, so she moves in with them and they are just, you know, very manly men. And you know, it's basically about her relationship with these three guys. And when I say relationship, I, I don't just mean like her finding out what it is like to be loved and having a family and all that. That is involved too, but there are actual, you know, sexual relationships involved as well. Listen, <laughs> I don't have a problem reading about, you know, unhealthy uh, situations and relationships and bad people and all of that. I don't have a problem with any of that. In fact, I picked up this book because I thought to myself, I want to read some really fucked up shit. That was my thought process. So I guess I brought this upon myself. Like, my thing is, when I read a book, I want the things in it to make sense. So like, if I'm gonna read about unhealthy people with unhealthy coping mechanisms, uh, doing terrible shit, that's fine, you know, I have absolutely no problem with that, as long as it makes sense, you know, as long as the author makes whatever is going on in the book make sense, and, you know, the, the actions and the thought processes of the characters make sense. So, that is my mindset going into any book, basically. And also, I would just like to point out that I don't think there's anything wrong with you reading slash enjoying a, a piece of media, be it books or movies or whatever, that has problematic elements in them. I think the thing is, you have to be aware and critical of the problematic aspects. That's it. You know, other than that, you're free to go. That's my personal opinion. Of course, I can't speak for everyone on this topic, and I obviously cannot speak on groups of marginalized people that I am not a part of. So the three guys that we have here are the step uncle, which, you know, sounds like the most disturbing and disgusting and unhealthy choice when you think about it, but you just wait, you just wait. We have the step uncle, Jake, and, you know, he is, he's fine. He is really just trying to learn how to navigate having a woman in this in his house and how to deal with this girl. She can be hard sometimes. But I really like Tiernan as a character, surprisingly, because most of the time when the guys, you know, were shitty to her or did something wrong, she actually stood up for herself and I really appreciated that. So yeah, and Jake is fine. He is not very good with relationships, but he's fine, you know, overall. And then we have Noah, the youngest son, and Noah is, I think, the only okay choice out of the bunch, you know, when when it comes to, like, the end game ship, you know. I think he's the only possible one, to be quite honest. Which is not to say that I ship them like crazy or anything like that, but, you know, out of the limited choices we had. He is 21, I believe, and he actually really likes Tiernan. He mostly treats her well and, you know, tries to make her feel at home and all that. He is a, a bit shit sometimes, you know? They are all very territorial, I guess you could say. Um, every now and then they get, they say this very animalistic shit that Okay, and then we get to the guy that is just the fucking worst, 
you know, while I was reading, I had this mindset of, I don't care if Tiernan and Caleb get together in the middle of the book and they have a thing in the middle of the book, as long as they don't end up together. You know, that was like my only thing. I was like, there's only one wrong choice in all of this. You know, this, I mean, not really, but this like, the worst choice possible is this guy, the the oldest son. His name is Caleb, by the way. And Caleb is just a disgusting human being all around. He is an awful person. He, in my opinion, was like the only wrong choice possible. You know, he was the only bad, actually 100% bad choice. He was the worst possible choice in the end. Spoilers, by the way, but guess who she ends up with? Caleb, of course, is given the tragic backstory because otherwise no one would be able to, you know, actually wish for him and Tiernan to end up together. But let me tell you a secret. Just because someone had a rough childhood, it doesn't uh, excuse shitty behavior, especially not of this type. It might explain it, sure, not excuse it not justify it. Oh boy, I'm already, I'm already getting very angry. All right, let's go. Caleb is, he doesn't speak and he doesn't sign. You know, he does know a few signs, but he doesn't sign. He's not hard of hearing. He's not deaf. He's just, he just doesn't speak because of something that happened to him back when, when he was a kid. And here's the thing, when Tiernan gets to Jake's house to the step uncle's house. There's only him and Noah there. Caleb is not there. And one night when she's doing her laundry or some shit, Caleb arrives and he literally tries to rape her. He is arriving from a hunt, so he's carrying a carcass, you know, he's carrying a dead animal and he's covered in blood. And he drops the animal to the floor and goes to Tiernan. And he grabs her and starts kissing her and starts, you know, trying to have sex with her. He tries to rape her and she says no multiple times, multiple times. But it's okay because her body says yes. Oh my God. Oh my fucking God. <laughs> and Noah actually hears this whole mess happening and he goes down and he, you know, gets Caleb off of Tiernan. And he's like, no, don't do that. She's a cousin and all that jazz and blah, blah, blah. And Tune is very pissed, you know, rightfully so. And just like, this motherfucker just tried to fucking rape me. And Noah's response is, he didn't know it was you. I'm sorry, what's that? Oh yeah, it's just the fucking point that Noah just missed. And Tiana herself is actually uh, thinking, what the fuck, that's not the point, you know, he can't do that to anyone, it's not because I'm his step-cousin, it's, you don't do that. And it's a whole shit show with that, but, you know, the story goes on, and I was like, it's fine. What I care about is how this develops, and, you know, how it ends up. That's it. And so I kept reading. And bear in mind, Tiernan is 17 when this happens, okay? I just, I wanted to put this out there. But okay, moving on. They start getting closer to each other, the four of them. You know, they are a family after all, kind of. Not really, but you know, they want to be a family, I guess. So they start getting closer to each other. And tangent, this book is an emotional roller coaster all around. Okay, I can't think of any other term to describe it. I would go from feeling absolutely disgusted to being, oh, this is cute, to in the next moment being like, what the actual fuck is happening? And then, wow, this is actually pretty hot. And it just kept going like that and going and going and going and it never stopped. It was a never ending cycle. So they are all, you know, learning to navigate this new dynamic in their lives. Not always in healthy ways, mind you. And Caleb just keeps being the fucking worst. He has this very hot and cold attitude that just drove me up the wall. And he did very awful and abusive things to Tian and like, he actually 
pinned her down and wrote slut with a sharpie on her forehead. And he is like this throughout the whole book, mind you. He, at some point, spits on her. At other point, he throws food in her face. There are moments where he pushes her to the ground. There are moments where he grabs her by the arm and hurts her. So yeah, the, the story goes on and, you know, at this point, I was actually quite enjoying the book. You know, it was very... It was very fucked up, but that was what I was looking for, right? And then, um, the day that Tiernan turned 18, both Noah and Caleb made advances toward her. This time there was actually consent involved, so, I mean, it's bad. But it's a bit iffy still. And they were going to have sex. But Jake caught them. And he was very angry. And he's very mad about this whole situation, you know. And he's very mad at her because she's actually a virgin. And she was going to lose her virginity with two guys at once. And oh my god. The, the lines between them being friends and them being uh, family and them being lovers, I guess you could say them being sacral start getting blood. As I said before, not only are they not related by blood, but they never actually had any contact, you know, with each other all their lives. So it's not as disgusting as it could have been. So Tiernan, the first guy that she actually sleeps with out of the bunch, is the uncle, the step uncle. I mean Penelope Douglas writes smart like so amazingly every single sex scene this woman writes is just out of this fucking world but okay see she starts sexual relationship with her step uncle and they are both aware that this is not gonna last okay they know there's no way they can keep doing this you know forever and they know this is an unhealthy thing and a wrong thing and they both just decided to they wanted to do it anyway, so they kept on doing it for a while. The guys, especially Noah, they got mad with Jake for that because Noah is in love and he thinks that it's unfair that his father got mad at them, you know, that day when they were going to have sex with her. And yet, when he turned his back and got alone time with her for five seconds, he fucked her, so... And basically Noah says that he doesn't give a shit, that his father is fucking Tiernan and that he's gonna fight for her, if you, if you will. And um, yeah, okay. So that's the scenario we have right now. One day Jake has to leave for this cabin they have deeper, you know, into the woods. I think he's going to hunt. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember it that well, but he's gonna be out for a couple of days and at this time Noah and Caleb start making advances toward Tiernan because they're alone and at first she denies them. I remember she denies Noah specifically once. She says no to Noah once and she actually stands up herself because he starts saying that you know she's just being used by the father and all that and she stands up for herself and she says that when she says no it's no and she makes it quite clear that's important okay to remember she says that when i say no it's no and you have to respect that and he lets her go and she goes but eventually uh the three of them decide that it's fine it's it's time it's time oh shit no i just fucked it up I don't care. It doesn't have to look good. Okay, it's fine. It was after a, a fire happened in the barn because it's kind of like a farm they live in and, and they have a barn and all that and a fire happens in that barn and you know all of them have to get the animals out and they're all quite scared and all that and Tiana actually injures herself in her arm and the guys give her a bath but that scene it's very good it's it's very good the whole scene yeah it's very hot okay 
besides the point, um, uh, they give her a bath and they stitch her up. Because the thing is, uh, it's winter, so there's quite a lot of snow. They live up the mountain and so they can get her to the city where she would get proper medical care. You know, he just, they stitch her up, Caleb stitches her up and yeah. The three of them fuck and yeah, do with that information what you will. <laughs> and when I say the three of them fuck, I mean the, the two guys fuck her. At the same time, they're brothers. They are actually brothers. Obviously, things start getting messy because how would they not in the situation? I mean, come on, <laughs> come on. Jake comes back. I don't know why he comes back so early. I think uh, there was a snowstorm or something and he couldn't get to the cabin and he's quite mad because the barn is in shambles, he, it's a mess, but she tells him that it's not the boy's fault and she tells him that she had sex with both his sons at the same time and he asks her, did they treat you right? And she says, yes, absolutely, they were gentlemen. And yeah, okay, and so he's fine with it, you know, he tells her that she is free to do whatever she wants and he's not bitter about it, he's not mad at her or anything, which, thank God, because that would be fucked up. <laughs> not that the rest of the show thing isn't fucked up, but you get what I'm saying. At this time, Tiernan is getting closer to Caleb, you know, the one who tried to sexually assault her, and she you know, he starts learning a bit more about him. And again, he has this very hot and cold behavior. Why am I calling you that? He has abusive behavior. Let's call it what it is. One time he's very, you know, gentle and he listens to her and, you know, he tries to be good to her. And then the next moment, he is just a piece of shit and he treats her like, absolute garbage. But it's fine because, you know, he has a very sad big story. How dare you be mad at him for being abusive and a literal sexual predator he has a bad childhood. You know, it's fine. Bear in mind, up until this point, we actually don't know what happened to him. Caleb is the most territorial of the bunch. And despite him treating her like shit, he wants her all for himself. There's this moment when Tiernan is gathering like branches from a pine tree I think to make one of those things that you put on your on your door in Christmas one of those arrangements anyway Tiananmen is trying to make one of those and just trying to get a few branches and she's struggling because you know her arm is all stitched up and Caleb goes up to her to help her because, you know, she's injured and all that so it's quite hard for her and he starts cutting off the branches that she chooses and she's quite happy because he's being gentle and he's being kind and she feels like they are finally connecting. After they gather a bunch of branches, he out of the fucking nowhere looks at her and she's all happy, she's all smiling and he just throws all of the branches to the floor and then he pushes her to the floor and every single time she gets up he pushes her again and he is pushing her towards the barn. Long story short they fuck and the content is quite iffy. When they are done they she turn and steps out and Noah sees Caleb getting out as well and he's like oh so you two are fucking now and you know he's upset because he is very into her and he actually, you know, has feelings for her. You know that. And bear in mind, Noah is a dick as well, okay? He constantly tries to guilt trip Tiernan into uh, taking him just because he's in love with her. But she stands up for herself and, you know, he starts eventually getting better, you know, and understanding this whole situation and reading the fucking room. And this is the point where Caleb uh, grabs her uh, her hand, not like with force or anything, and she decides to go with him because for some reason she is more inclined to have feelings for him. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. And listen, 
I I understand that a woman knows you nothing just because you're nice to her and all that. But maybe don't fall for the guy who literally tried to sexually assault you, you know? On the moment he first saw you. Maybe don't do that. Especially if this guy has been abusive to you from day one. Uh, and he just keeps being abusive to you all the fucking time. Maybe don't do that, you know? But okay, I get it. She is young. She's making mistakes. Okay, that can be realistic, right? And here's the thing. She has connections to all three of these guys because of specific things you know from herself and her life that she sees in them they did a very poor job at explaining it but yeah all it makes sense for her to feel this pull you know towards all of them at this point she's more inclined to feeling all these feelings towards Caleb and you know he brings her to her room and she thinks they are gonna have sex again but he pushes her on the bed and he is basically he wants her to go to sleep because he doesn't want her to be around his father and his brother and she's like fuck you i don't want to go to sleep and you are not my owner you don't get to decide what i do and he just gets out of the room and locks her inside with a lot that he put there and she didn't even notice Jesus fucking Christ okay so he locks her up there and she screams for an hour or two and eventually she just gives up and goes to sleep we get to chapter 26 which was probably the most disgusting thing that I've read my entire life it's the first chapter we get from Caleb's point of view and it is Disgusting. Disgusting. Tiernan is in her bed. Caleb gets inside her bedroom in the middle of the night and he's in a monologue. His thoughts are horrendous. He keeps calling her a slut in his hand and talking about how much of a slut she is or sleeping with every single guy and all of that how she can't be trusted and all that shit and while she sleeps he starts you know touching her and she wakes up and she's like what the fuck and he is just acting a bit like an animal and you know for a long time she is into it and at some point she is not liking it anymore she tells him to stop three times and he doesn't. The third time, she actually screams and he doesn't stop. She manages to get out and she literally has to, you know, slap him and hit him to get out. Just trying to run away from him and she's hitting him and all that. And he keeps going after her. And she manages to escape. She has to literally escape. And she gets inside Noah's room and locks herself up in there. And she's very distressed. She's very, you know, she's crying and she's just very obviously. Noah wakes up and he's like, what the fuck is going on? Did he, did he hurt you? Did he actually hurt you? And she doesn't want to talk about it. She's like, go back to sleep. And she lays in bed with him. And he's very concerned. He's like, what just happened? Did he hurt you? And she shakes her head, like saying no. And in her, in a monologue, she says, no, I'm the only one who hurts my, uh, who hurts myself. Because uh, I believed he was actually feeling something for me. And then he goes and does that. And I'm like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> she lays there and nowhere is quiet for a while and eventually he decides that this is the perfect time to tell Caleb's sad backstory because you know it's not personal you know it's not about Tiana at all that he tried to sexually assault her it's about how broken he is and you know all of this shit that happened to him and why he can't trust women because and he can't bring himself to love women you know, to allow himself to love women because when he was a kid his mother she was with him only him only Caleb she got to a house in the middle of nowhere and she got out 
and she went to a party there. And she left him in the car, alone, for three days. He was very young, he was four, I believe, when that happened. And listen, that is absolutely awful. I'm not gonna make light of the situation. That's horrific, you know. If something like that, I mean, that is a very traumatizing thing. Caleb's behavior and all of the things that he does, you know, in present day in the book, make sense because of all of that, but they are not justified. They are not excusable. They make sense, sure. You know, all of that explains what's going on, but it doesn't justify it. Eventually, Noah falls asleep and Tian decides that it's safe for her to go back to her room, but she hears a noise from the bathroom. And she goes over there and she sees that Caleb is sitting in the shower, underneath the shower, and she sees that he's holding something in his hand. And when she goes to look at what it is, she sees that it is a piece of wood from something that she was working on. Because she was working on some furniture that she found in the barn and she was painting all the furniture and she was very excited about it, she was very happy and she's like, well, what the fuck did you do? And she goes down to the workroom and she sees that he destroyed the first piece that she painted, which was the one that she felt the most attached to. She is delivered, you know, she is absolutely furious and she turns to him and she's like, you think you're gonna get to me through this? Motherfucker, you cannot get to me. I spent 17 years living with people who barely looked at me and who barely spoke to me. No, no, you don't get to get to me. And so she picks a crowbar and starts destroying the rest of, her, of the furniture that she painted by herself and just saying, you are not allowed to get to me and um, all of that. And it's actually a very powerful moment, you know. And it's very sad as well. And she breaks every single piece of furniture there. And he's just, you know, watching and is very angry. Jake hears the commotion and so does Noah. And they both go downstairs and Jake is like, what the fuck is going on here? And he sees everything that's, you know, the mess that's around them. And it's like what the fuck just happened and Caleb is starting to you know dress up because he is going to the cabin that they have in the woods he, every time that something happens and he's frustrated and all that he just retreats to that cabin and lives like an animal because that's reasonable and Jake is like you are not getting out in this weather because it's been snowing quite a lot and Caleb doesn't give a shit and he's going anyway and he before he steps out into the snow. He looks at both his father and his brother and looks at Tiernan and he taps his chest, which is sign language, American sign language for uh, mine. And basically he's telling his father and his brother that Tiernan is his. She doesn't know that, okay? She doesn't know sign language. So Tiernan spends a few days just you know being very angry you know which is entitled to at this point Caleb doesn't come back Jake and Noah are trying to you know talk to her and she is she doesn't want to talk to them one of them tells her that he's sorry that Caleb broke the furniture that she really liked and she's like I don't care it's fine I mean, not like that, she's very angry. I don't care, I wouldn't be able to take it with me when I left anyway. And they're like, when you left, what do you mean by that? You know, we are your family. Which, you know, after you fucked her, probably don't keep telling her that you her family. And she's like, she understands how this whole situation is very fucked up and it's always been. And she's like, what the fuck did you all expect? You know, did you think I would just stay here forever, hopping from bed to bed? And we would just keep doing this forever, like, no, this is unsustainable, you know? She understands how unsustainable the situation is. And she's even thinking to herself, like, well, maybe he thought we would just go back to being a family, you know? Uncle, cousins, niece, and all that, as if that is fucking possible. And someday I would just bring my husband here, and the poor guy wouldn't even know that my family 
I fucked all of them. And Jake turns to her and says, we would have backed off because Caleb is in love with you. That is not the point. First of all, <laughs> oh my God. First of all, he literally raped her. Second of all, he has been abusive to her all this time. Third of all, he broke all of their furniture. Why do you think him being in love with her matters at all? And why do you think it's acceptable of you to say that to her? Also, doesn't she have a fucking choice? What if she wanted to be with Noah? He would have backed off anyway, just because Caleb was in love with her. So because Caleb had a sad, tragic childhood and a very traumatic childhood, he, he just gets to be the chosen one. Whatever. So after that pearl of wisdom from Jake, Tiernan is understandably very pissed off and she is like, Caleb is a fucking animal. She tells him that. Then Jake tells her that, you know, it isn't personal and, you know, Caleb wasn't right and this is how he communicates because uh, he, he communicates by losing his temper. He was wrong, yes, but he was hurt. The, wo the only woman he ever loved forgot about him, almost killed him. He's in love with you, Tiernan. He was jealous and she is livid. Uh, she is fucking livid with that. And she starts crying and she says, she, her inner monologue goes like this. I want to yell and tell them it doesn't matter. He can't treat people like that. And it's his choice how he communicates. No one is stopping him from saying what he needs to say. So he's jealous. So his father and brother in the way. He didn't have an issue sharing me the night of the fire. Am I supposed to read his mind whenever he, sh he suddenly changes it? He's not a human. He's a bear. His love feels like shit. She says that. She says his love feels like shit. She spends a long time mad at all of them. Understandably so. And eventually... She is done feeling angry at Jake and Noah for what Caleb did. And eventually she uh, has this moment where she goes back to the workshop to, you know, do her stuff while Noah and Jake are there. And it literally says, I am bigger than this. I want to live. So she is understanding how fucked up this whole thing is. Right? And so a little time passes and eventually, you know, she goes back to Caleb's room and she discovers that he's been keeping journals, you know. So she is reading all of them and it's all about how broken he is and how blah blah blah, you know. Listen, I don't care. He's an adult and he's responsible for his actions, okay? So... This is not acceptable just because he he experienced trauma, okay? A lot of us experience trauma and don't go around, don't go around sexually assaulting people. So maybe don't do that. And of course, after reading all that, her love is rekindled and she wants to go find Caleb because he's been uh, up in the cabin f for a long time at this point. And so she and Noah sneak out in the middle of the night you know, and go after Caleb. And they find Caleb and Caleb and Tiernan start having a relationship. Things are going well for them. Uh, Caleb does try to uh, throw her birth control out against her wishes. And it's fine. It's fine because they love each other, so it's fine. Long story short, um, the the couple is doing fine and they break up because there's a, a kid in town, a girl in town, who Caleb used to have sex with and she's pregnant and she insinuates that the kid is his. And, you know, Tiernan is very pissed off by that and she asks him if the kid is his and he refuses to answer her. Remember that, he refuses to answer her. He refuses to, you know, nod a yes or shake his head a no. Refuses. Refuses. She literally tells him, 
do anything to tell me that this kid isn't yours. He refuses. And she goes back to the house, you know, she takes a ride with Noah and she is understandably very angry. And the woman who raised her, uh, who is, who was her mother's manager, I believe, is going over to visit her and check on her and all that. And there's also gonna be a photo shoot because why not? <laughs> when I tell you that this book is a roller coaster, I mean it in every possible sense of the word. Caleb forces himself on her once again, okay? He forces a kiss on her and she's like, get the fuck out of my face. And both, and he starts getting very aggressive and both his brother and his father, you know, scream at him and keep him from going after her and all that. <laughs> Nightmare. It's a nightmare. It's a mess. It's a nightmare. Jake gets everyone out and he calls off the shoot and he finally has had enough of this ridiculous behavior and he tells both of his sons to get inside the car. They are going to town and they're going to talk about this and they're going to solve this whole situation. And Tiananmen is left home alone, despite the fact that they spent the entire book telling her to never go anywhere alone or be home alone. Because the town boys. The rapist is inside your fucking house, Jake. She's left alone and she starts packing her suitcases because she wants to leave, you know, with the woman who raised her. Mirai is her name. She wants to live with Mirai. And Tiananmen writes a letter to Caleb, actually, that is amazingly written and it shows that she understood this whole situation and how this relationship would never work and she's like I can all be in a house with a person who doesn't talk to me again you know I already lived 17 years with my parents and I don't want to go through that again and the bottom line is that you were never going to change and I was never going to actually stay you know I can do this to myself I need to you know listen to myself and take care of myself and all that and I was like yes oh my god I can't believe this is actually happening and I was very happy and at this time the book thinks it's a perfect time for us to go back to the who uh, who set the barn on fire subplot because why not we go into a home invasion subplot Tiananmen manages to uh, save herself from this whole situation. Jake and the boys get back and they have already called police. They're very concerned about Tiananmen and Caleb goes up to her and he kisses her and is very worried about her and she's like, oh my god, he actually loves me and I'm like, girl, please, not again. And Mirai gets to the house and she's like, okay, I'm taking you out. Caleb shows up with both of Tiananmen's suitcases, the packed suitcases, and he just shoves them inside Mirai's car. And at this point, Tiananmen thinks to herself, he's telling me to leave. And I'm paraphrasing here, but she thinks something like, uh, the words, words were never the problem. Uh, he has all the ways of communicating and actions speak louder than words and his actions are pretty clear he's telling me to leave he's not going to fight for me he's not going to communicate with me and she thinks all that and she's like fine fuck the shit i'm out tiernan and mirai go back home things are going well tiernan is obviously she's in pain and she's still mourning the end of her relationship but she is starting to understand everything that happened and why it, would, it was never going to work out and all that, and she is becoming her own person, she's growing, she is making plans for the future, you know, for college and all that, and I was very pumped at this point, because I was like, everything that happened in this book made sense, despite being very fucked up, and now in the end, she's actually understanding how fucked up it was, and she is actually growing, and she is deciding to have a different life, and I was very pumped for that. I was very happy for that. Uh, after six weeks there, and after she, you know, found her peace with herself and her parents and all of that, she actually goes to the beach. She always goes to the beach when it rains, you know, and she goes to the beach because it's raining and she's having a moment and you know, I'm very pumped at this point. And Noah shows up there and is like, ah, I thought I was going to find you here because you said that 
you know, whenever it rains, you come to this bay, this beach and all that. And she's very excited to see him. And she finds out that he's been there for six weeks, six weeks, which is the same amount of time that she's been there. And she's like, why didn't you come to me before? And he's like, I also needed some space. I also needed to, you know, live my own life and grow into my own person and all that. And I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing. This is awesome. Like both of them are growing up and becoming their own people and growing out of all of that mess and, you know, the mess of the whole lives and all that. And I was like, I like this. I like how this is going. I like how this is going to end. And eventually he tells her that Caleb disappeared right after she left. And she's like, let's not talk about him, please. She literally looks at him and she says, he's still trapped inside that car, Noah. I was loving this. And I checked and there was only one more chapter and the epilogue left. So I was like, there's no way you're gonna mess this up. No way. It's like, you have the perfect setup for the perfect ending for the story. And she messed it up. And then she goes back home and she sees Caleb there. And when I read that, I was like, oh fuck. No, you're not gonna do that. You are not gonna do that. She did it. Now he, he's speaking. Because of course he is. He's speaking. And he's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, and I'm a new man, and if you want to, we can live together, and, you know, it's gonna be so cool, and, you know, my life is wherever you are, and I love you so much. And she's like, oh my god, I love you so much, yeah, let's be together, because, like, now you speak, so we're not gonna have any communication problems anymore. There are no words to describe how fucking livid I was when I read that. No words. If this book was absolutely the same up until the last chapter, if it had a different last chapter and epilogue, I would have loved it. Loved it. But no. Of course not. Of course not. Because, you know, he talks now. So it's fine. It's fine. He's forgiven. He's a good guy now. Because, you know, the fact that he is sorry and he's talking now, apparently just erases the fact that he is an actual rapist. And I also hate how it gives the stone to the story of like, her love cured him. He was cured by her love. She cured him. You know, because women apparently are rehabilitation centers for broken men. So yeah, they get together. Again. And then we have an epilogue about how years later they have a kid and they're so happy and all of them live like this perfect little family. And you know the worst part? The worst part is that there's this moment where they're talking about, you know, the first time they met when he came back from the hunt in the middle of the night and he tried to rape her. They're talking about that. And they talk about it as if it's a big go joke. And I'm gonna read it to you because it's it's disgusting. Tiernan says, what makes you think I wouldn't have run? And Caleb says, because I made your thighs quiver. She snorts, you didn't. There was a new moaning on top of the car the first night we met, he asks her. And she goes, I told you to stop. And then Caleb goes, I'm sorry, I say sweetly. I couldn't hear you over the sound of for your panting. And she's like, shut up. Because it's, ha, 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 ha. It's a big old joke that he tried to sexually assault her. And that's how they met. Goals. Relationship goals. Anyway, here are my nails. They look like shit. But it's fine because this was shit as well. The bottom line is, man are shit. That's it. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. And, you know, bearing with my angry thoughts and this rant, uh, if you've made it to, you know, this far. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you feel like it. And as always, I'll see you around.